Hello Music 100 students. This recording serves as an introduction to our class on the Renaissance. But before doing that, I want to take a moment to look back at where we were um, by providing a list of some summary points that we looked at in medieval music. Um, my hope also is that uh, this slide and some other things I'll talk about in a minute will serve as a model of some things that you can do while you're studying. Uh, it's important that in studying for the class that it is not a matter of just preparing for, for class and attending class and participating, but then reviewing, summarizing, processing the material. And this is a, a, one example of how that material might be processed. You can see that I've, in these summary points, I have put down something on sort of a, a matter of uh, music and society uh, uh, the, and the role of the church. Uh, in music here, in this section I talk a lot about uh, various aspects of the music. And then finally I finish off this slide with a discussion of, not a discussion, excuse me, a list of important composers. So I hope uh, this is something that you might consider doing as well after class, of making a list of summary points uh, from what we cover in class, how it relates to the reading that you did prior to class. Um, in that same spirit, I wanted to encourage you to take a look at these questions which I introduced in class. Uh, do consider these as ways of framing all of the work that we do. We will cover a lot of detail, um, and because we'll be dealing with music that is probably unfamiliar to most of you, uh, if not all of you, um, it will be important to be able to sort through this material and make some, some sense out of it. In the spirit of sorting, in a music class, that includes sorting the music. And I wanted to encourage you to use the listening guides uh, that are in course mate, uh, that accompany the text. I think that you'll pro they'll prove very helpful. So when you go to the course mate, you go to, to the chapter list, since this list will change depending upon uh, what chapter you're in, and here, for example, we're dealing with Renaissance. I'll go to the Renaissance chapter on the Renaissance. And we'll get uh, examples that are specific to this particular chapter. I've highlighted the active listening guides. And then if you click on this, you'll, you'll get a visual representation of the piece, something that you can... Um, uh, can follow like this with annotations. You'll notice that it lists the times across. Uh, it will uh, give definitions of particular phrases that Wright uses on occasion. If you want to get rid of these annotations, you can do that. You can do this. Uh, but as you can see, as the piece unfolds, you'll be able to see uh, commentary. And I think this will be particularly helpful in developing uh, a good knowledge and understanding of this music and how the music is unfolding. So please do consider using those listening guides. They're really terrific. But getting ready for our class, after looking at uh, the framing questions, uh, Wright talks about the, the definition of the Renaissance as a rebirth, that is a of a something that was perceived as a return to cultural and stylistic wealth that supposedly had been, supposedly, I have to emphasize, had been absent during medieval times. Uh, also a rebirth of a spirit that humankind had once possessed in the classical age, that is ancient Greece, um, and using that as a model for new values. As Wright also points out, um, it's not really a rebirth for music. Which, A, a new approach to the combination of word and text through mimetic means. Um, the Renaissance was, a, was also a time of major growth in the sciences and the secular arts. There's the course of William Shakespeare, Michelangelo, uh, Copernicus, who uh, asserted that the earth is not the center of the universe, and particularly for music, Gutenberg, uh, the 
per the person who uh, basically developed uh, the, the ability to, well, develop the printing, printing press, and the importance of printing in the dissemination of knowledge. Uh, it's also worth pointing out in Wright's text, he, he talks about the interest in the individual. I'll ask you in class exactly what does that mean. Another thing that I'll be asking you about uh, in class uh, will be his discussion, uh, Wright's discussion of humanism. Uh, what exactly is that and what does it, how does it play itself out uh, in the arts and particularly in music? Uh, a visual representation of other things that were happening in the arts, uh, of comparing uh, uh, our painting on the left of St. John uh, on Patmos. Patmos was a, a small island uh, in the Aegean Sea uh, with Raphael, the Alba Madonna. I'll be uh, showing this slide again in class, and I'll be interested in your reflections on as you compare and contrast these uh, two works of visual arts. Um, to uh, to see what well what you see, and then we'll use that as a segue into talking about music. Uh, as Wright talks about uh, Italy uh, in the Renaissance, that indeed the roots of the Renaissance are in Italy. For our purposes, uh, we'll be looking at composers who are active in Rome, uh, who are active in Venice. Uh, and in Florence. Uh, so if you can take a minute to, to look at this, at this map, you'll get a sense of, geographically of what we're, we're talking about. In looking at the patrons and supporters of music, uh, we'll be looking at various art forms, uh, in well, various, I should say, musical structures and, and that deal with the two patrons of music, of music, primarily the church um, and the court. Uh, at the court, it was not unusual for some of the bigger courts to have 20 or so professional singers and instrumentalists. Um, there was also a growing musical literacy in the middle class and the upper class, uh, brought about in part by the development of the printing press, uh, that is the distribution of text and um, the uh, opportunity uh, for you know, having a critical audience that needed to become literate. So those are some brief remarks in framing what we'll be looking at. What I'll ask you to consider in, before class uh, is this question before you. That is that Wright describes a number of changes in develop, and development in both sacred and secular music. Can you cite an example in each and explain why you believe they are significant? So keep that in mind as you read the text. Some other terms and concepts that you should keep in mind as you read the text are the ones that are in front of you on the, on the screen. So with that introduction, I'll look forward to seeing you in class.